sum up how this feels for you guys and what you've achieved tonight for both yourself and for Scottish rugby as a whole? Um, no, it's it's a fantastic feeling. I mean, it's winning is is is, is, fanta- is a great feeling, and yeah, maybe all all my, my enthusiasm is different than the two players next to me. So um, yeah, but uh, really grateful and thankful. You know, of, I'm a religious person, and I'm really thankful that for the grace um, today and this whole season. You know, again we left the field without an injury, and I'm really proud of that. Yeah, I'm just I'm just really proud of the boys, really proud of the group, um, really proud of the group that's not here as well. You know, we, we had to leave boys behind um, to come and get this job done this week, but boys that have contributed a hell of a lot to, to our season this year. Um, and just everyone at Glasgow Warriors and everyone in the community as a whole, like, um, just really thankful for the support and the way they've, they've got behind us this year. Um, and yeah, can't wait, to, can't wait to see them all when we get back. As we've seen all season, I guess, last weekend and again tonight, you guys had to really dig in. It was a really gritty performance. That must give you a lot of pride. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think the way the first 40 went, um, you know, I think we would have taken 13-7 at half time. Um, but again, like you say, um, you know, I'm just really proud of the forwards, especially, um, you know, the, the defensive effort they put up front, the way that no matter what was thrown at us and, you know, credit to the Bulls, they, they fired a lot of shots in that, in that first 40 and, and towards the end. But um, yeah, our big men, their physicality, the way they stayed calm and the way they um, yeah kept us in the game was, was unreal. Hi, Franco. Congratulations, guys. Um, Franco, can I just ask you, I mean, where do, I know you're a, a modest man, where does this rate in terms of your coaching achievements? No, this is an important competition, you know. You, um, uh, it's, it's class to win in different countries and travel the way we did this week to come out here and I know the pride in the stadium, played here before, so that right stop, I'm definitely um, convinced that it will be hard to beat this feeling. And you're always a man with a plan. Is this, you know, when you came in, you know, the beginning of last season, is, are you ahead of where you, where, you, where you plan to be? Or is this kind of where you, where you expect to be at this stage? Yeah, I think it's definitely where we expect it to be. But this tonight was an important ingredient. Um, we always talk about uh, an hard edge to Scottish rugby players. And I think tonight the boys proved that just that, you know, to come here and play a South African team on their home soil in front of 52,000 supporters and then still win. And the way we did, um, you know, is a speci- special accolade to the to the men. So, yeah, we, we've 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 gone leaps and bounds. Um, we've we've grown leaps and bounds. But um, again, this the sensation and what we've achieved tonight will be an important ingredient going forward. And a quick one for Matt. Uh, congratulations, man of the match tonight, Matt. I can just about see you over the microphones. Um, I mean, you've I mean, it's been a long, hard season from the World Cup. You seem to kind of hit. You know, you, you, you're, are you playing as well as you ever have, and, and why is that after a ten-month season? Um, yeah, like I, it's been it's been a quality season in general. Yeah, an up and down Six Nations with Scotland, but I think you know every time, especially after a campaign, we come back in. Frank was brilliant at you know reinvigorating the boys coming back from international rugby to to come back into the team and and you know bring that energy and um, yeah we had some great games in Europe and then you know the last four games probably sums up the entire season in terms of. You know the way the boys have fought and they've trained and they've, um, you know, not not used the travel as an excuse, whatever it may be. Um, and personally, yeah, it's been it's been a pleasure to be a part of. And um, you know, when you're playing with your mates and in such an enjoyable group, I think that brings out your best. I think go South Africa by short notice and, and, and went over went over there. What does that say about the the character of the team? No, obviously I'm really proud, you know, I think it's more of what you guys are going to say about the team, it's important, so, no, from my perspective, fantastic, they've um, reacted very well, you know, we've used disappointment in our favour, we've learned lessons, uh, we had a saying during the season that we don't have to lose to learn, and they've embraced that uh, mentality, and, and they're pushing the, the, the limits and the, the boundaries and parameters that, that, that that's expected at this level, so, um, obviously, really um, proud of the way they went about the business tonight and the way that they've bought into a plan. And I re- honestly think, um, you know, this is just a start, hopefully, and we can, you know, keep on progressing. Great. And Kyle, tell us about these goggles. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so my, my dad and my, my brother are doing the security for us um, and we've been on a couple of ski holidays back home and I don't know, it's become a kind of a, you know, a thing across rugby celebrations that you need goggles to protect yourself from all the champagne spray. So my brother, without uh, letting us know, packed a couple of the pairs and then um, when we came into the change room tonight, he had them waiting. So um, yeah, myself and Sione and a couple of the boys have got them on. Brilliant, thank you.
Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Cheers. Yeah, you also got Gaff Harper. Hi, guys. Congratulations. Um, Matt, can you just sum up what this means to, to have won this trophy alongside Xander? Um, yeah, I think it means uh, it means absolutely everything. Like I grew up at school um, watching Xander progress into the professional ranks, and um, I've watched him grow into arguably one of the best tight ends in the world. And you know the work he puts in, um, the eight minute shifts he's done in the last three weeks are just are beyond ex exceptional. And yeah, to win it with him and to do it for our family and our um, our partners and kids and stuff back home is um, yeah, it's hard to put into words. And Kyle, just how much of a springboard can this be? You've talked about, you know, mentality being an issue for Scottish teams, for the national team. How much of a springboard can this be, not only for Glasgow but but for Scotland as well? Um, yeah, look, I think I think it can be huge. Um, I think looking at it from a Glasgow perspective, you know, this is. Franco talks about that hard edge and, you know, I think that's something we've kind of been searching for and working towards as a group, um, you know, particularly over the last 12 months. And um, there's just something about it that, you know, this you can't you can't really get it until until you've done it, if, if that makes any sense. And I, th I think sort of the belief that, you know, particularly our forwards have shown up front in, in giving us that hard edge over the last three weeks, um, I think that gives us a lot of belief going forward. So. Ryan Wilson talked during the week on his podcast about Joining the celebrations, has he sorted out a plan for you yet? Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, I absolutely love having Wills here. You know, he made a plan to get over here with the URC. He's still one of us. Um, <coughs> you know, we still love him and he's still one of the boys. So he's, he's in and amongst it. He's wearing a, a white linen shirt that um, that already doesn't look so white. So I'm um, really chuffed that he's out here with us and, and, can share, and can share this with us. He's been a massive part of this group over the last, over the last two years. Great stuff. Thanks, guys. Uh, Callum Crow. Yeah, congratulations, guys. Just a question for Franco. It's, it's obviously been a, a long, hard season where a lot of the guys have been in camp for the best part of a year, going back to the sort of pre-World Cup times last year. Are you, are you going to give them some scope to let their hair down tonight and celebrate? Never. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, yes. You know, I think there's a perception, there's a wrong perception of me in, in the media. That, um, no, we, we, apart from working hard, there's, um, there's no... no is there's no, of course, yes. This is tonight. What a pinnacle, and I'm really proud of them. <laughs> they can really, they can really, you know, they've just drowned me in all the champagne that's available anyway. So, um, no, of course, there's a, there's a, we, we're not going to start up until the first of August. So these guys are now going to, unfortunately, or fortunately, some boys are heading back in Scotland Cup on, on, on Monday night already. But, uh, but uh, no, of course, you know, um, I'm really proud of the boys and and. Uh, that they've worked so well, they deserve every minute. And you know, if you play hard, then you can party hard, I suppose. I heard you talking to, to Ryan Wilson pre match, eh, sorry, post match earlier on. Who's in charge of the cigars and whiskies, and where did that plan come from? <laughs> yeah, I know. When I started the year ago, or two years ago, there, I on the first one morning, seven o'clock, I rolled out whiskey for everybody to give them a wee taste on what it will be to have a dram of whiskey on the back end of a, of a win. and. And I said, savor that, keep that in your mind. And one day, one day, as soon as we can win something, we'll have an evening with, uh, where we can have a dram of whiskey and a cigar. And, and tonight, I think these guys made it that. Absolutely. Congratulations. Good. Uh, last one from back in Scotland, Andrew Petrie. Well, congratulations, guys. Franco, I'll start with you. Five minutes to go in that game. What were the emotions like? Obviously, you assume quite a, a calm presence for his camp five minutes to go yeah no i was um look if you just look from a rugby perspective we were we haven't given we hardly give away a mall try this whole season and uh, i knew the bulls were not going to play out of that even if we have a yellow card so we were defending had some good defensive sets before that so i just felt if we stay patient and not get penalized um, a turnover will happen so yeah the way um so i can honestly say and this is not to sound um, arrogant, I suppose, or that, that, that there was the nerves was under control. Let me put it in that way. I had calmness. I, I, I'm sure uh, the belief in the boys through the process. We've been talking about a process the whole year, so I backed the process, and the boys were backing it, and and that in the end, um, you know, brought the the success that or the significance of this win. And you talked after the game about 
building blocks. What's next for Glasgow Warriors after this? What do you want to conquer next? Yeah, look, there's, I still believe that there's a lot. We want to be the best version of ourselves. That is what we strive to be. You know, we don't, we don't play opposition. We play against ourselves. If you look yourself in the mirror, you must be honest and understand that you've you've given it all once you retire. So up till they retire, they must uh, keep on giving it all, and and that will be our challenge. You know, how many times now often can we repeat a performance like tonight? Just one for Kyle. There's been something in the water at Scotston this season. A lot of new dads in the squad. Do you think that's played a part in making the boys a little bit more mature and maybe help to the success? Um. Oh, I don't know if it's if it's made us any more mature. I mean, the way we're sitting here now, you probably don't think we're the most mature of boys. But um, I think I think just that you know, Glasgow is a club that that likes to connect to its community, connect to its family, and I think for so many of us, you know, to have to finally feel you know what it feels like to have your own kids and 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 have your own family. I think that's that's certainly something that's that's brought us closer together. Um, you know, and like, you know, Sione had his, his baby, um, you know, very recently. And um, I think it's just being able to share in, in that experience with, with boys and, um, you know, all across across the squad, so many so many dads and um, a couple of moms too. I think that, yeah, those experiences bring people closer together and give you a deeper sense of, of why you're out there and doing what you're doing. And just finally for me, for Matt as well, obviously, is the emotion of winning. Is there a feeling a bit of, of vindication as well? A couple of people had written you off. Wrongly, obviously. Are they had they? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, not me. Some yeah. people. Um, yeah, I think I've, yeah, I think it's been a an up and down season. I think in the last probably month or so, um, I've sort of gone back to um, to what makes me a good rugby player and the basics. And um, and you know, I probably would get frustrated in games at certain times when things weren't weren't going my way personally. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I've sort of looked at the, the wider picture and and the team and um, and what I can bring to that and um, yeah. So as I said earlier, when you're playing with your mates and people you love coming into work with, um, makes it all that easier. Congratulations, guys. A uh, question for you, Franco. Um, a few weeks ago, you sat at Ellis Park and you were let's say a little glum after that performance. What have you done to sort of re-energize the group after that? Because obviously, you needed the final surge. And you pulled it off. Yeah, well, I, I, if you looked at the game, there was two decisions that gone against us. That two offside tries, offside penalties that should have been in our favour, where they scored two tries from. One when it was 14-8, and the other one it was 14-15. What 15-14? So um, if you look at the game and in its whole, we were actually not not bad on the day. So a lot of positives on the Monday and the Tuesday when we got back there and said, look, this is what we did. The scoreline wasn't against us, but rugby works like that. If you don't take your opportunities or you don't make the best of them, or if you make the best of them, that is what the scoreline is going to be. So we took a lot of positives from there and uh, never tried to, you know, to, to, with, uh, I always, in one game in the season will go bad, as much as one game will be good. So if you throw the best game and the weakest game out, you get the consistency um, across the park. So that was what we were um, heading into. We wanted consistency and performance. and. You know, the boys fronted up. I think the Lions did us a big favour that night. So um, we took a lot of learnings from it, but also a lot of enthusiasm um, to bounce back off it. Yeah. Franco, congratulations. <coughs> congratulations. Uh, Franco, just when did you see there was a turning point of the game? Um, was it when Elric dropped that ball and you guys got the penalty, which led to your mall try? Um, and then for, for Carl, you guys were, it was a bit of a mirror of, of the Munster game and the fact that you guys conceded quite a few penalties in that first half. Just how did you guys get the guys together and you know, obviously keep, keep the minds focused and, and where do you see you guys getting on top there? Yeah, obviously I think the score before half time was important. How we got to that wasn't, uh, wasn't important for me, but the fact that we, when the opportunity arose, we scored. We had, had up to then six, six entries into the... 22 and we convert none, so it was an important um, important situation. But with that stat going into the halftime talk was easy. You know, we knew that um, that we were doing things right. We just weren't completing it, and then the penalty count was against us. And now Carl's going to answer that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think. Look, I think like you say, you know, it was a similar script to last week, and I think you know the fact that we had come through that. Um, Gives boys a lot of a lot of belief in those moments. You know that that you've got a plan that works, and that if you stick to that, um, you can get the results. And then, 
to be honest, it's, it's guys like Maddie that, that stood up, you know, the way he did before halftime, you know, a couple of really big carries, um, you know, that kind of um, reignite that fire and boys that, that, that get that belief going and, and you know, think get, get the ball rolling again, that you can get something done. And then I think that try before halftime was was really crucial, as Franco, Franco says. And then we came in um, at halftime and, again, like Franco says, spoke about our process, um, you know, a process that we really believe in and, and really trust in and knew that, um, you know, we couldn't let the... The scoreboard or the or the time pressure get to us. You just have to, you got to focus in on that moment. And once you've once you've ticked off that moment, you go to the next moment. And that was the way we we went at the second half. <coughs> I asked the hypothetical question yesterday: What it would mean to to win so close to home against with the team and the place that you've made home? How does it feel simply? Ah, uh, I, I can't put it into words. To be honest, I think to to be able to share the final here with, with this group, um, you know, who feel like family, feel like brothers and sisters, um, you know, it was incredible. But then to have my own family here, um, you know, have mum and dad here. Um, I had some really close mates, you know, from school who I, I sat in these stands and, and watched games with. They were here supporting me today. And um, I think just that, that sense of that sense of belonging and, and where we've come from um, just, yeah, makes us incredibly special. We think that every Monday and Tuesday, Franco's beating you, but you're in there drinking whiskey. Um, how... Uh, Talk us through that process and you know how it feels to have finished off that journey as well. Again, I think um, you know if you look at where we were 24 months ago, Franco came in and I think the biggest thing he had to do was was to get us to believe and, and give us a sense of direction. And you t you know you think back to drinking whiskey out of a, a polystyrene cup on on one of his first days. Um, you know I think there were a lot of boys that, that thought he was insane to be honest, but. I think the consistency and the, and the conviction, you know, about how he goes about his business and, and what he believes in, um, you know, I think that gave us a real sense of direction and that got boys following him in, in behind. And, um, yeah, now you're looking back at, you know, drinking whiskey out of those cups and all of a sudden he doesn't seem so crazy. Just one for my, for me, Mike, you came in to the squad on the back of the, you know, that, that great team that won in 2015. This, this group's been desperate to write its own story. What, what, what does that feel like now that you, you've kind of joined them on the, on the walls at school? <laughs> yeah, it feels... It was incredible, as you said, like, I've probably been in Glasgow what, nine years now. Um, there's a big mural just above our gym with um, pictures, I think it's Richie Vernon, Hoggy, um, Chris Fasaro, Tony Simo, um, all Beautiful. walking to the stands after the game and that's something that we come in look at every single day um, and yeah, to sort of come in after the, you know a winning season in 2015 and um, to come so close in 2019 at home, um, this just feels... Yeah, it feels in, in, incredible, sort of being in, a, in, in and amongst that sort of trophy winning seasons. Uh, congratulations, guys. Um, Kyle, the, the coach, says he was pretty calm uh, towards the end there. How, how are you feeling, though? Because, you know, towards the end there, you had a, a try to allowed for basically just a, a tackle that was a split second too early and then, and then the yellow card, I mean, on, on another day, that could have gone the other way as well. Were, were you kind of feeling that, oof, you know, maybe maybe things are turning against us? Yeah, how did you get over that? Yeah, no, again, um, you know, I think credit to the boys, they were, they were really calm and, you know, we've got, we've got leaders all over the pitch, um, you know, and the, the message came on pretty early, you know, when that team review came and, um, you know, it was it was again it was it was tactical things. You know about you know going into defence of, of you know thirteen and one. Um, you know if we did get a yellow card, and I think that just kind of you know that kept boys from wondering about you know what if what if what if that just that just kept boys on task, kept boys on focusing on what we needed to do. And um, again, I just I can't give enough credit to our, our big boys up front. You know the way they fronted up in those malls in in those big D sets. Um, you know in the last 10, <coughs> 10, 15 minutes, I feel like they're ready really break the back of it and make sure that we, we came home safely. And uh, Frank, obviously the, the mall, how you guys mauled and, and how you guys defended the mall, obviously a, a massive part of the victory tonight, but your line out as well and, and the way you contested um, on the Bulls ball especially, um, how, how pleased were you with that? Yeah, well, there's a lot of work going in there um, in the week. We actually lost the way too many line outs tonight, to be honest. Um, out of... Out of um, uh, out of well, character, I suppose, but yeah, there, there's a lot of work. I mean, I've compliment Scott uh, Cummings and both him and Richie. We've got a line out board, as we call them, and the boys work hard at it. Um, yeah, we do a lot of work on opposition teams, and um, it paid off, yes. So, Franco, um, Kyle mentioned calm. You're down on the road to Munster, yellow cards come flying out. 
team remains calm, you get the business done. Tonight, you come out here and you're down 13 0 in the first half, and the Bulls are putting pressure on you. They keep coming down the pitch. What's the key here? Have you instilled discipline and common in this team, and they just have the confidence going to do it? Because you also mentioned at the end of the game, your nerves were fine because you were comfortable the team was going to get done. So, what's the key to keep this team so calm? Because that seems to have been a key component the last two games. Yeah, I think it's mutual trust. You know, we've uh, started our. Our theme for the preseason was trust, you know, a lot of the boys, um, um, we decided last year to, um, you know, start late with the preseason. Um, not late, we stuck to our normal program. Everybody else started way earlier, we stuck to the, to the eight week, six week, six and a half week programs, eight week program, it depends on what we did. But, um, so, and that they came into the, into the building um, physically prepared. And that that was their buy-in into the companies uh, in our in our little company. You know, they they and therefore the trust that they've they've earned and we've earned from each other allow us to you know to concentrate on the task at hand instead of what we want. And uh, you know, I think that is the compliment to the boys again, um, the culture of the club, the the management, the, two co the coaching group, um, Nigel and Pete. They they they. they they, they bring calmness, we're organized, we know what we want. So I think all of those ingredients without, this is not bragging, this is just explaining, um, leads to uh, mutual belief and mutual, and mutual trust. So I think if I must sum it up, I think that's what it is. John, I know yesterday you didn't want to give me the, what the game plan was, but um, if I were to ask you now, where would you say you, you feel you won the game? Oh, look, we were, we were going to meet them physically. Um, I know what they want to bully you in, yeah. I've had personal experience from it, so they want to bully you physically. And uh, I thought we, I knew if we front up physically and we apply pressure instead of absorbing it, we can get a, give ourselves the best chance. Um, we wanted to have a little bit more width in the game, which we got with uh, Hugh Jones' try in the end, um, which we didn't get to, and it was more because we didn't win the lineouts um, as we should. We're always going to take them on. Um, you know, for a, a bit of a saying, always going to take them on where they think they're strong, and it was in the in the, in the set piece. So, um, and then obviously we knew that if we defensively front up, we will will take the initiative away. And, uh, and then obviously the the kicking game was important. You know, three guys that um, if we're going to give kick it too long and too far uh, to them, we will allow them too much time on the ball, and uh, we try to obviously take that space away. So. Yeah, that in, a, in, in short, um, I can't, we won't go into detail, but that's more or less what it, what it was. And um, without, without sort of uh, demeaning whatever other coaching <coughs> goals you've, you've had in your career, obviously some, some sterling ones, what's it like to sort of travel halfway around the world and, and still need to sort of come to Loftus to, <laughs> to, get a, to get a big-ish win? Look, look uh, we plan and we prep and we convince but the way the players rocked up tonight, the great must have there. They were brilliant in believing. We said we're not going to use the um, travel as an excuse. So halfway around the world travel. We said we're not going to talk about the altitude. We didn't come up in any conversation this week. And not that it was forced. It was just we knew that it was we just have to act on what we want. If and uh, so the compliments it with the team, the players tonight, they've they uh, didn't look for excuses. They kept on applying themselves, and I think they they now banned the myth of that the fact that altitude changes the outcome. It, if they are prepared to work hard the whole season, you give yourself the best chance in an important game. And last one, um, Carl. I think six, seven years ago, you were playing in this what Greek was in the Super Sport Rugby Challenge. I don't know if you still remember this far-flung um, field that you used to play in. Um, just from a career sort of um, significance um, point of view for you, what's it like to be sitting here? I know you've played for Scotland before, which is obviously bigger, but just talk us through the significance of this moment with the context of where your career has been before. Again, I, th I think I said yesterday, you know, having played the Super Sport Challenge or Varsity Cup here at Loftus and then, you know, coming back with, with Glasgow, you know, life has a funny way of of going in circles and, and making you reflect. And I think when I reflect, I just, um, you know, the incredible support I've had, um, you know, from family, friends and, and coaches through my career has been incredible. Um, and I think just, you know, moving halfway across the world, I think I, j I just can't thank the people, the, the players and, and the people in Glasgow enough, you know, for 
for making it feel like home, for making you know us feel a part of the family, um, you know, and I think that's what that's what drives you when you when you go out on the pitch on a on a, a game like tonight. And um, yeah, just in, incredibly grateful for the, for the opportunity tonight.